Welcome to the Supplement Engineer Podcast. My name is Robert Chansky. Joining us today, the CEO of Quality of Life in the AHCC Association, Mr. Dan Lifton. Dan, thank you for joining us. How are you? My pleasure, Robert. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, anytime I have a first-time guest, I like to get a little bit of their background where the supplement industry is a fascinating entity. We always come from so many disparate backgrounds. Um, so first, I'd like to get you know a little bit of your history, how you got into the supplement space, how you came to uh, be the CEO at AHCC and Quality of Life, and we'll, we'll go from there. Sure. So I've been in the industry for 17 years and wound up here somewhat by accident. Mm -hmm. um, I, my background uh, was actually in finance. I did cover pharma for a while. Uh, but 17 years ago, I had an opportunity to join a family business, and I knew nothing about supplements beforehand. In fact, if you ask me what I thought of supplements, I think of those like late night commercials and weight loss pills and wild claims. Exactly. Um, but uh, my grandmother had passed away from breast cancer. And one of the things that intrigued me is that there's a lot of research on mushrooms for cancer in general. So I wondered why this just never even came on the horizon for us. Um, she was late stage. So uh, definitely at that point, we should, be, we should have been really been looking at all opportunities. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's when I sort of discovered AHCC and said, this is actually an area where I can make a real impact and difference. And like a lot of people on Wall Street who at some point have an existential crisis and say, what am I really contributing and how am I creating value? Um, I was lucky to escape and, and really was fortunate to uh, dedicate a big portion of my career to uh, uh, increasing the knowledge, awareness, and really providing access to uh, to cancer patients, caregivers, and consumers to this and other fantastic compounds. Interesting. With AHCC, so there is a good amount of research, as you mentioned, with mushrooms, cancer, but as part of the supplement industry, we get slapped on the hand pretty aggressively by the FDA anytime we mention the C word. So how do y'all go about navigating that and uh, ethically uh, conveying the message about AHCC and the, the numerous health benefits it can have? Great question. So uh, the C word is definitely something that we throw around here. So what we've decided to do was to really create a category of AHCC. So uh, we contribute to uh, an industry association, which we actually help create called the AHCC Research Association. So uh, we contribute to it financially. And that organization is dedicated to uh, funding research in AHCC and also educating and really raising awareness for that. So there's no commercial activity they engage in. They don't sell anything. They don't provide commercial links to anything. They work with key opinion leaders um, and public relations firm to publicize whenever there are new studies that are basically coming out. Mm -hmm. So we're educating consumers in HCC, and then they can go out and basically choose their favorite brand. So um, I, I, get, I guess I didn't answer your, fu your full question previously, but um, my, my role as CEO of Quality of Life Labs is that we are a nutritional supplement brand and have been the leader really in the HCC market. But we're one of a number of brands that are uh, available in the marketplace. So in a sense, we're sort of subsidizing the creation of that category. But since we're the leader, we're basically fine doing that. And our mantra is let the research be, speak for themselves, for itself. Uh, we're very disciplined what we promise and, and what we don't promise, which is that basically HCC is an immunotherapeutic compound. We recommend it always as an adjuvant or a complement to traditional therapy. We highly discourage people from shunning away from that therapy, but we believe that HCC is a very powerful complement. For, 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 for all immune compromised patients and really all of us, right? Because as we get older, our immune system simply weakens, which is why we tend to get sicker with age. And, 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 right. and um, so that's really the story there. Now, is AHCC, for the listeners out there that may not be as familiar with this, we always hear about the different polysaccharides that are present within mushrooms. Is AHCC something that we can find in a bunch of different medicinal mushrooms and functional mushrooms, or is it just... Uh, solely relegated to a very specific species? Uh, it's an excellent question. And so AHCC, we say, comes from a mushroom, but it's not really a straightforward mushroom extract. Mm -hmm. And this is where being a mechanical engineer by trade, I think you would appreciate it. So, uh, you know, pharmaceutical companies, they design drugs, right? And then they synthesize them. Um, with natural products, so obviously some products are just straightforward powders or straightforward extracts. But AHCC is actually an engineered product, except that it's engineered using a completely natural process. Mm -hmm. So um, they've identified a, a very unique 
subspecies of the shiitake mushroom in Japan. This was over 30 years ago um, because it has contains levels, high levels of alpha glucans and some other uh, compounds called axoglucan fractions. And what we then realized that in order to make them highly absorbable, bioavailable, they have to go through a very special culturing process. Mm -hmm. So they develop a proprietary media where they basically culture uh, this novel compound that they've, they've identified. Um, and the manufacturing process, which takes 60 days, basically involves sort of taking the cell wall or scraping off a, kind of a little cell off of the mycelia, those hair-like particles of mushrooms, mm -hmm. and then putting in a Petri dish and then going from a Petri dish to a larger tank and a larger tank and a larger tank. So that's basically your culturing cool. process, almost analogous to like brewing beer. And at the end of the mm -hmm. process, you basically get HCC. So uh, HCC is a totally novel compound. It's not naturally contained in any mushroom, including mm -hmm. shiitake. It's just manufactured basically from shiitake extract. And then again, it's a, it's a novel, novel compound. So you have alpha-glucans, um, um, you have exoglucan fractions. There are some other patented products in there. And again, it's, it's a totally novel product, uh, but again, it's engineered uh, using an all, all natural process and it is a natural product, which is why it's so safe as well. Very, very interesting. Um, are there any videos that we can direct to? I, I would like to insert some videos into the show notes so people can actually see if y'all have these on the site um, so I can direct the, the listeners to go and view it just to see the, the whole process and how it goes from, you know, beginning to the end result. Absolutely. So if you go to the website, ahcc.net, uh, that's the website of the AHCC mm -hmm. association uh, that I'd mentioned. And if you click on media, there's a link called videos. And again, I'll send you the link, uh, which actually has a number of key opinion leaders and doctors and experts discussing their experience with HCC um, in a variety of uh, settings. It has some news content. Um, and then we also have a lot of other, in addition to video content, a lot of other articles from places like New York Times and, 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 um, and a number of other uh, reputable publications and obviously all of the studies and there are more than, uh, at this point, there are more than uh, 60 PubMed index studies, right? So these are in journals that are recognized by the NIH mm -hmm. and more than 30 human clinical studies. So there are really no other mushrooms that I know of that has the amount of data. Um, so yeah, uh, having posting that in show notes would be fantastic. Okay, excellent. Um, how often or how regularly do y'all look to get new research published and how active are y'all in uh, funding studies because there, there's this, there's this part where the rubber meets the road with the supplement industry and that, uh, big farm is definitely not going to kick millions of dollars our way to invest in supplement research. The FDA, the NIH, they've got bigger fish to fry. So a lot of the times people will say, well, this is an industry funded study. We can't, you know, I don't trust this because the company that's putting this ingredient out, they're paying the researchers to do this. And they say, well, that automatically nullifies it at the same time somebody's got to fund the research. It's got to come from grants. It's got to come from somewhere. And if it's the, the government's not going to fund this, it's going to rely on investors, entrepreneurs, the, the companies that are bringing these ingredients to market. So walk the listeners through a little bit about how y'all go towards getting research done to further shore up the, the body of evidence behind AHCC. Absolutely. Um, so the point about self-funded studies is va are valid if you wind up you know, self-publishing it or producing a white paper or maybe mm -hmm. going to a second tier journal. But the benefit of publishing in a Medline index journal is that it's a reputable journal. They have an independent board of editors, people who review the paper. So unless that research is credible, nobody would simply publish it. The second thing is um, when you do apply for grants, obviously the grant provider brings a lot of credibility to the study as well. Right. So to give you an idea, our latest published study, um, which showed that HCC was able to expedite the eradication of HPV infections, which was very pervasive. And I can chat about that later. That was co-funded by the National Institutes of Health. So there was a grant by NIH, that grant needs to be matched. So the HCC Research Association does you know, provide the co-funding. And then it's published in the high impact journal, uh, which is called Frontiers in Oncology. And it is again, a peer review journal. And then it's presented the Society of Gynecological Oncology annual meeting. So, um, so yes, there is some funding going in, but again, it's co-funded with a reputable organization and it's published in a famous journal. And to your other point, um, so the, the, the opportunity with HCC, this is a patented trademark novel compound. So there's an incentive to invest in the research. Whereas if you talk about you know, generic, uh, whatever mushroom you pick, 
why would an independent, you know, why would a commercial entity of any kind support it? Just like you said, farmers certainly aren't going to support it. You know, the NIH has some small grants for herbal compounds. So mm -hmm. I think the opportunity here, again, going back to your engineering background, is to take natural products that we know has healthful properties. Uh, unlock that with a power of technology, right? Where you make it more bioavailable, you make it sustained release, you give it some unique properties. And not only have you enhanced the efficacy of the compound significantly, now you've actually created a novel compound that can enable you to invest in that research, which is necessary. Mm -hmm. So to me, what we've done with HCC, I think over the last 30 years is sort of a model for the natural product industry. And mm -hmm. frankly, a lot of people have followed in the footsteps, including our, our parent company, Maypro, they've been developing more and more products and at Quality of Life Labs, we've been putting in products comparable to HCC into, into our formulas. Um, and again, like we won't use any, any ingredient in Quality of Life unless we have at least one published human clinical trial, well-designed, mm -hmm. et cetera. So we've tried to kind of follow that principle across the board. Interesting. Uh, you talked about, you just mentioned improving the bioavailability of a product, and that is a key limitation on a number of nutraceuticals and dietary supplements. Are there any limitations that y'all have identified with AHCC and then through the production process, you've enhanced it, or are there going to be further versions of it? Like, are we going to see a liposomal AHCC or some other kind of like cyclodextrin kind of compound? Or is it the one y'all already offer? Is that perfectly bioavailable? Not perfectly. When I say perfectly bioavailable, there's a high bioavailability where it doesn't need any kind of extra carriers or, you know, protectants as it traverses the GI tract. Absolutely. So, um, so yes, AHCC is highly optimized. Uh, basically to improve its efficacy, but the process has basically already been completed. So the compound was actually developed uh, with that in mind. And the way that AHCC works for a mechanism of action is that once you consume it, it actually uh, goes through digestive system and, and hits um, pyrus patches in the gut. And basically what it does is that it physically stimulates an immune response. So your body recognizes like, okay, there's some kind of a foreign agent. So I need to kind of perk up and go into sort of, you know, terror, how we have sort of terrorist surveillance level in the US level mm -hmm. three, four, five, right? Our immune systems get lazy and surveillance goes down. So what HCC does is it basically upregulates immunity without overstimulating it. And again, it just comes through physical contact. You're not seeking to absorb HCC in the blood. So just like you said, we use beta cyclodextrin for a CoQ10 product because you need that in the blood, curcumin, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you're not looking at absorption in serum. And again, HCC has effectively already been optimized um, in order to be able to come into contact with uh, with these pyrus patches. We recommend for HCC to be taken on an empty stomach. So actually, so that you basically are not even sort of mixing with food. We found that it works better than um, consuming it with food. But yeah, it's, it's already been optimized. And again, we've proven out the efficacy through all the clinicals. So we really haven't looked at sort of messing with it further because uh, we know that we know that it works. And unless we were... To run clinical studies in some kind of a, a, a you know different form, we wouldn't be certain. So we're mm -hmm. sort of sticking with what we've got. Excellent. Regarding dosaging time, is this something that once a day is good, multiple times a day for because some people like to break apart their supplements, some people just like to you know toss back five, 10, 15 pills, however many different supplements you take each right. day, just all at one go right before breakfast. So is it something where since this is somewhat of like a low level agitator to the immune system. Is it something that really you wouldn't want to do it multiple times a day to where you could be, you know, ramping that up too much and you're over stimulating that immune response and it's a once a day thing is best. And then give us a, a roughly an optimal dose range for, and does it vary by age, health level, body composition, that kind of stuff, which all I found. Sure. Two very important questions. Let me address the latter one and then come back to the former one, the dosage. So, um, What's nice about HCC is that it, it does not overstimulate the immune system. This is a concern with immune products. So basically your body, again, you know, just like you're eat, like if you were to eat a lot of mushrooms, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, you can't really overdose on shiitake. So what we found is that HCC has an immune balancing effect. So in studies, we've shown that if somebody has is operating at peak natural killer cell levels, mm -hmm. um, they're actually not increasing. And if they are operating below baseline, they are increasing. What ACC does across the board is that it activates the number of circulating dendritic cells, which are basically kind of like border guards. So you want those people to be on the ready 
but they actually don't act up unless your body is now subjected either by a virus or some kind of external agent where you have abnormal cells growing and then your body needs to activate. So yeah. uh, that's really the big opportunity with, with HCC. And in fact, um, we haven't done clinical studies on this, which is why we don't recommend it for, or don't promote it, I would say, for autoimmune diseases. But we actually looked at in animal models at diabetes, colitis. These are uh, actually autoimmune conditions. Um, and we've seen people take it you know, safely, although again, we don't promote it as such. So anyway, so that's sort of around the safety angle. In terms of dosage, we generally, for compliance reasons, kind of recommend a one a day. People will take generally one gram as sort of as a maintenance dose, or if people are not facing a serious condition like cancer, and then three grams is a dosage that was actually used more in the trials, particularly with, with, with the larger trials. What we've seen, for example, for HPVs, we showed that in, in terms of persistent HPV, so these are women, about 10% of people get who get HPV don't clear it at all because their immune system basically compromised. So what we showed is that patients with HCC at three grams a day were able to clear infections in only six months. And in, in the pilot study at one gram a day, it took them nine months to clear. So it, it, they were able to get to the result, but it just took them longer. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, uh, that's basically uh, where we are in terms of use. And the final thing I'll say is that if you were to discontinue taking HCC, we've studied that as well. So for another month, you're basically uh, operating at an optimized or higher immune system level mm -hmm. after a month, it goes back to baseline, but it doesn't go below that. So again, safety with, with immune products, I think it's really important. And finally, you have, you know, 30 years of use of people taking that on a daily basis, 17 in my case. And so, uh, it's really a very proven product. Interesting. In addition to the infection stuff. So we've talked about some of the stuff with, uh, HPV, we've talked with chemo cancer, there's a number of other benefits I think the listeners would uh, benefit from hearing about it. So HCC, there's also research I'll have on site for liver, various other infections, diabetes, inflammation. Um, I would be very curious to, to see how diabetes goes, because that is just one of the biggest, like, what is it? One in three adults in the United States are diabetic. I think we're, I think we're right around there pre-diabetic, at least like 33% of the adult population in the States is pre-diabetic or full-blown type two diabetes. Um, do y'all, in addition to the viral research I'll have going with HCC, is there going to be more concentration going towards those lifestyle induced disorders in the coming sure. months and years? Well, so, so it's a critical question, just like you said, just because of how pervasive metabolic syndrome and diabetes is in the United States and globally. And um, what I like to talk about, I even when I have PowerPoint, I show a slide, is that the immune system plays an absolutely critical role in the body um, that I think is often underappreciated. I think COVID has you know, helped people appreciate it. But mm -hmm. if you look at the conditions, so many of them occur either because your immune system is weak or your immune system is basically overactive. And as a result, it's causing harm, right? So th this is why the balancing effect is so important, right? So again, the reason why we get sick as we get all the viruses, bacteria, fungi, cancer, is because our immune system are operating at, 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 at a compromised level, right? Our bodies are always forming abnormal cells. If you have a healthy immune system, they simply get killed. It's when that immune system gets compromised that this proliferates. So that, just like you said, Robert, we've covered. But then there's a second set of conditions where your body actually over acts in terms of its immunity, right? So obviously all inflammation, right? And inflammation, you're talking about joint disease. You're talking about cardiovascular disease. Obviously you have allergies, right? Seasonal allergies, allergies to food. That's an overactive immune system. And then you have these autoimmune conditions, right? Like colitis and, and a variety of other digestive disorders. So again, the power of HCC is that we've shown that it's able to actually down regulate the immune system when it's basically hyperactive. So to your point, we're now building out a pipeline of research where in addition to upregulating immunity, we want to produce more data in terms of the downregulation. We've done a nice human clinical study with a probiotic product called BB536, which is, comes from Morinaga milk, uh, and probiotics are well known. So we now have one human clinical study, and we basically do want to build it out. Uh, but again, I think if you look at comorbidities, people with diabetes are often experiencing a, a lot of other health conditions. And this is why, again, you want to really balance the immune system. And that's why foods are so much more powerful than supplements. Uh, I'll end with a story. One of the analogies I love from one of the most published 
uh, researchers uh, at uh, on curcumin said you, when and he worked in big pharma said in big pharma your body is like a chain right with links and with a pharmaceutical product you're taking this sledgehammer and you're just hitting that one link which could be effective and with cancer yeah like that's what you want but as a result you can imagine how the chain just goes crazy right side effects all this kind of stuff with a supplement product you're able to just really take like the whole chain and the link and gently nudge it right so maybe you don't have as an acute response but you don't deal with side effects and you're able to sort of nudge the body and maintain that balance. Mm -hmm. And that's really what HCC does and why it's so helpful, a variety condition. Again, we're, we're balancing the effect without creating all the crazy shakes that you would when you hit something with a sledgehammer. Yeah. And you just mentioned curcumin. I think HCC and, and curcumin would make a pretty dynamite stack. If you're doing the, just the general health and, and wellness stack that you're looking for. It's I've been using curcumin for, probably about a year and a half now and just some other medicinal mushrooms. I haven't experimented with AHCC independently yet. Um, just I've went, gone down the rabbit hole as far as the research, but I'm, I'm curious to add that into the regiment and see, just get a general baseline of how things, you know, progress from there. Absolutely. hundred percent. We have a quality of life. Also, we have a sustainably highly available curcumin and a lot of, a lot of the people uh, basically stack those two because there's so much synergy there. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously there's a lot of cancer research in curcumin. It's a very powerful anti-inflammatory. Um, and so uh, like you said, it is a perfect synergy. Yeah. Um, before we uh, shift gears to talk about a few of the other quality of life uh, ingredients that y'all offer, is there any other things you'd like to touch on about AHC in general? Um, I think that what I like to talk about is, well, kind of two messages. One is, uh, I think your listeners know the importance of taking a multivitamin. I treat AHCC as the multivitamin for immune system. It is so essential for you to maintain peak immunity. It is not an accident that older people get sick. It is not an accident that cancer is an age-related disease, which a lot of people don't realize because young people are affected by it too. But there is a direct relation with age. So being able to maintain peak immunity is just so critical to your health. Um, that it's really sort of a daily must. And the second thing is people don't appreciate just, just the pervasiveness of, of some of these conditions. You talk about diabetes, but let's say HPV. 40 million Americans have HPV at any one time. This is an extraordinary number. And, you know, healthy young people can clear that infection within two years on, on their own, but not always. The longer you expose the infection, the longer is the risk of uh, six different HPV-associated cancers. And generally, like, you don't want these viruses living in you, right? So it doesn't take a lot uh, to basically create that insurance to make sure that if you do get something, you can get rid of it quickly. Mm -hmm. And so that's why immunity is so important. And obviously, we think that when in the immune field, HCC is one of the most researched compounds. So those are my sort of closing comments on the HCC topic specifically. Excellent. Um, is this something that other brands will be able to use like, so are y'all the main supplier of this? Cause we also have brand owners that listen sure. to the podcast or do y'all supply the raw materials as well to where if they want to include it in a daily multivitamin, a daily uh, immune support formula or anything like that, they can reach out to y'all and get the bulks or is it strictly proprietary to uh, quality of life? Um, so uh, excellent question. So uh, our parent company, Maypro, is the exclusive agent of HCC and the supply to a number of different brands. We have an arm's length relationship with quality of life, actually. So we buy from them and, and sort of follow the same rules that other folks do. Um, their policy is that they will supply HCC to brands that actually create new demand, that educate consumers, that educate doctors, et cetera, et cetera. There are some Amazon-only brands who say, wow, this sells well. Let me go ahead and launch it. So those companies don't get approved, but companies that can create, you know, incremental demand do. And their mission, my mission as well, is we want to try to get HCC into as many hands as possible, right? So mm -hmm. partnering with brands and offering as an ingredient, even if it's less profitable, it basically enables us to achieve more scale, which is our mission. And then, of course, by doing that, we also want to make sure that companies are motivated to promote, right? So mm -hmm. if they motivate it and they invest and then somebody kind of comes in on, on Amazon and just competes without without investing, obviously, they, they're demotivated. So so that's the premise. But yeah, I mean, happy to if people contact me, uh, Dan at QL.us, I'm happy to refer you back to the Maypro folk, um, meaning your listeners who might be interested yeah. uh, in the ingredient. So certainly not guaranteed they would be able to get supply, but happy to have the conversation. And again, if they can create incremental demand, that's definitely possible. Okay. And Maypro is just, a, I love the ingredient. Like, as one of the major ingredient houses in the industry, I, I love what they do, especially like Vaso Drive AP slash Amelia. Yeah. 
one of my absolute favorite ingredients for sports performance, for cardiovascular health. It's, I have raved about that ingredient. Ex, I can't n- numerous times over the years. I, I love it. So it's, I was not aware that y'all were, uh, affiliated with them or, or you know, they were your parent company. That's, that's yeah, good to know. That, absolutely. Fantastic ingredient. Um, we actually use it in a blood pressure formula because there's great data on that as well. It's a natural mm-hmm. AC inhibitor. But as you said, a number of sports nutrition brands have been very successful. And uh, yeah. the late Hector Lopez um, really put this yeah. ingredient on the map in partnership with us. So um, it's it's a yeah. fantastic product. Yeah. And he's uh, he will be missed. He was a, a very, very good friend of the industry and just a, an awesome human being. And that's, yeah. uh, he Absolutely. had his hand in a lot of fantastic ingredients that helped bring the market and so it's, uh, it is a loss big loss big loss um shifting gears to some of the other offerings from quality of life uh can we touch on oligonol absolutely yeah. in fact it's it's uh, oligonol is the next logical uh, product to talk about because actually it's produced by the same manufacturer of HCC with whom we've been a partner for, for the last 30 years. And uh, oligonol addresses the question that we sort of already addressed, right? Which is um, there are these great compounds, but unless they go through some kind of a process of engineering, they're often poorly absorbed. So uh, it's a well-known fact that polyphenols are really good for you. And we see these commercials of these cranberry farmers sitting in, cran- you know, in a in a sea of cranberry and promoting polyphenols. The problem with polyphenols, they're poorly absorbed. So you put it in a test tube, you say, oh, it's really high arc value, that's great. But it doesn't matter what happens in the test tube. What, ha- what matters is really how that product is absorbed. So oligonol was designed with that in mind. So it's an extract of lychee fruit, which actually has the second highest naturally occurring level of polyphenols. Mm-hmm. Lychee is sort of an exotic fruit, very popular in Asia. And, uh, but that's not nearly enough. What you need to do is you need to try to unlock the bioavailability. So polyphenols are generally long chain polymers. So uh, what's done with the ligonol, it's a patented process where uh, the manufacturer takes these long chain polymers and basically cuts them up so that they become shorter chain. So that the percentage of monomers, so single chain, dimers, trimers, dual chain, triple chain, is much higher in the ligonol that you would find in lychee extract or, or generic extract. Mm-hmm. And what they then do is, and then they study it in blood and say, look, you're able to actually triple the level of polyphenols in the blood because you've been able to deliver it that way. Interesting enough, one of the aspects of the proprietary technology is that once they cut them up in these short, short chain polymers, they cap each of them with a little bit of green tea catechin so that they don't repolymerize. So mm-hmm. you cut them up and you tap them. So it's a very, very novel, like, again, patented product. And what it does is that it increases nitric oxide production and improves vasodilation and has a slew of different benefits, all of which have been validated by published human clinical trials. So these benefits include uh, improved circulation with a lot of benefits for heart health, including diabetes we talked about, improved oxygenation of the muscles. So it's used by a number of professional athletes. And there's a number of studies on you know, in- improved VO2 max, better athletic performance, et cetera. It improves the delivery of oxygen to the subdermal layer of the skin. So we have multiple studies on reduction of wrinkles and brown spots. Um, and then as we talk about in the quality of life products, three of the major causes of aging is inflammation, oxidation, and poor circulation. So we address all those three products, all those three benefits with the linaganol. So it's kind of a super anti-aging product. Interesting, very, very interesting. Um, Moving from that one, uh, another one that I think I've started to really go down a rabbit hole with, the CoQ10 SR. I guess let's touch on why, because CoQ10 supplements, there's a couple of different forms of them on the market. Um, I don't think the sustained release is as known to average consumers. They probably see the ubiquinol form or the ubiquinone form. Um, So I guess let's touch on why y'all chose to go with the the SR version compared to the regular one and what benefits y'all are seeing from the research. Absolutely. So with compounds like CoQ10, curcumin, resveratrol, you actually want to maintain a certain level of these actives in serum. So there's a benefit. So for example, the regular CoQ10, if you look at the studies, they were done like as an AM and a PM dose, right? Because you want, you want that in your body the whole time. Mm-hmm. So in case of those products, there's just a clear benefit of sustained release because instead of, you know, the active going to your body and three hours later getting flushed out, you're able to uh, maintain these levels on a, on a basically sustained level. Mm-hmm. So um, 
uh, again, Maypro, a parent company, is exclusive. Actually, they develop the product in partnership with a tech, tech, biotechnology company. And it is the only Koki 10 in the market that's 24 hour sustained release. So that's really powerful because you take it once a day and that's it. The second interesting element of microactive CoQ10 is that if you look at the studies for more bioavailable CoQ10 and you look at the individual participants, you kind of get a bell curve. So some people get eight times more bioavailable, fantastic. And some mm -hmm. people get four times. But there is a slew of people on the other edge of the bell curve that are getting no improvement. And so the problem is you don't know whether or not you can be part of the bell curve, uh, that part of the bell curve. So in our study, we showed that 100% of the subjects triple by availability or better. So to us, it's like an insurance against poor absorption. So we're able to basically ensure that that part of the bell curve basically doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that technology works is that um, it is actually a patented complex of coenzyme Q10 and a compound called beta cyclodextrin, which comes from non-GMO potatoes. And so basically what CoQ10 does, we, you can think of the beta cyclodextrin as like a boat that moves at a very slow speed. So we're parking CoQ10 on that boat and that boat is now sailing basically at a much lower rate than if you sort of put, you know, CoQ10 downstream itself. So mm -hmm. very powerful product. There's probably 30 products in the market. And ubiquinol is fine, but from everything that we've seen, once you take ubiquinol, once it actually gets into the gut, it turns into ubiquinol anyway. So there's a lot of marketing around it, but we just haven't seen the comparative benefit for that reason. Uh, again, mm -hmm. a lot of great products. There's no problem with ubiquinol. But again, we feel that guaranteeing by availability in terms of without this intersubject variance and providing sustained release is much more important of a benefit. And we've applied the same technology, this microactive technology to curcumin, resveratrol, PQQ, uh, oligonol actually, and uh, now soon launching citrulline. A citrulline, you said? A citrulline product, yep. And we think that's going to be real exciting because obviously citrulline is a precursor to arginine mm -hmm. and it's going to have a lot of benefits, particularly in sports nutrition. So we're very excited. Is Can you, uh, I guess, elaborate any more? Is it, are you, you're finding that you can get by with a lower dose possibly? Because if you look at the citrulline literature now, it's anywhere between 2.4 grams all the way up to 10 grams. I mean, that's a pretty wide gap. Um, which it almost seems like there's an arms race in some of the sports nutrition sectors where one company goes, I'm going to put three grams and somebody comes, I'm going to put six, I'm going to put 10. I'm thought. Sure. At, at, at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's going to be a limit to how much the average human is going to be able to metabolize compared to a 250 pound bodybuilder. Um, so with the SR forms that y'all are getting, is it going to be more of that? Are you staying in that kind of defined range already? Or are y'all finding something that maybe you can get by with a little bit lower amount? It's an excellent question. One we've given a lot of thought to. So, Generally, consumers want a high dosage and enhanced bioavailability. So the argument of like, well, since it's more bioavailable, you can take a lower dosage, you know, has generally not worked. But you're right. I mean, I think that if you're delivering three grams and it's more bioavailable, that's very compelling. You say, look, you don't need to deliver 10 grams. Um, the way that we approach all of our research is first, we prove that there's a sustained release when there's a benefit. Um, and then you can do so-called dissolution studies. So you can replicate what happens in the gut and say, okay, the, you replicate the gut environment basically in vitro and you say, this is how the regular compound is absorbed and this is how the sustained release compound is absorbed. In order to make claims and enhance bioavailability as discussed, you have to test it in human clinical trials. Um, so what we do is we do a small pile of trial, which we completed, but we don't really make those claims and we don't go to customers and say, oh, this is equivalent unless we completed a larger study. So that is in our pipeline. And once we've been able to do that, we can say, okay, it's three or four or five times more bioavailable. And then, you know, at the end of the day, people and brands that we sell this ingredient to at our parent company will be able to dose down if they want. Um, and then obviously, as you know, there's the market of sports nutrition, which is my hard dose market. And there's a market for maybe healthy consumers that are seeking vasodilation. There's some data in male sexual health that starts at around 800 milligrams. Mm -hmm. um, so in our products, we will never recommend a dose that's lower than a dose that had been tested in human clinical. So for that particular product, the dose starts at 800 milligrams which is two capsules, and then obviously other people will dose up. But we think in the sports nutrition context, it would be a much higher dose in a powder in a water-soluble form. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a lot of success with actually with highly bioavailable arginine. There's a product in the market, uh, nit mm -hmm. nit nitrosogen, I think, you know. Yep. But um, the reason why we chose citrulline is it's a precursor to arginine. So if you can improve absorption of citrulline, you get arginine as sort of the downstream benefit. Agreed. Okay. And I should mention that if anybody's interested in any of the ingredients Quality of Life Labs uses, 
write to me again, Dan at QL.us, and I'll refer you to the folks at MayPro. You can buy the ingredient and then launch it in your own formula. Perfect. Um, are there any specific ingredients in the arsenal of quality of life that are just kind of some of your favorites outside of AHCC? Yeah, I was kind of the, the impetus for the, this podcast in the beginning, but are there any other like unsung heroes in the lineup or just, you know, ones that are like you really think uh, is vastly underrepresented, underutilized in the mainstream? Uh, the answer is definitely yes. The first one that I would talk about is uh, we have an ingredient called Certmax. We have a product called yellow and black turmeric. So obviously everybody's uh, quite familiar with, with curcumin and turmeric, uh, but um CERTMAX is a, is a novel, uh, actually it's a CERT1 activator, so it's a very powerful anti-aging product. And the common name for it is black turmeric. So um, it's a fairly new product on the market. It comes from a plant called Comferia parviflora that's native to Indonesia and Laos. And um, there's a lot of really comparing research on it for something called AGEs, which are actually a big problem for diabetic patients. So it's a really important product for for that segment, uh, but also it's, uh, like I said, very powerful anti-aging product. It activates this uh, CERT, this gene, five times uh, uh, stronger than resveratrol, which is what's, what's, what it's known for. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of really nice data. So both for anti-aging and, and people having issues with any kind of mitochondrial conditions and even skin health. So that's the first one I would, uh, I would, I would point users to. Again, it's called yellow and black turmeric. Um, and then um, I think that another product that uh, um, I think is, is quite compelling um, is in our lineup uh, is uh, our uh, melatonin SR. So the problem melatonin is a fantastic ingredient, but what happens is that typically you get to peak levels at uh, like four hours and then you wake up, people have nightmares, et cetera. So that's another product where you actually want to want the release to be sustained. So we have a seven hour sustained release product. So you gradually absorb it uh, because you're not causing these huge spikes. There's less nightmares. People don't wake up groggy. And again, you're able to get like that seven hours um, at a time. It's a highly experiential product, very powerful. And what's important is you do find these sustained release products in the market, but what people do is they take a tablet and they coat the tablet with something that sort of slows down the release. Mm -hmm. But what you find with these coating agents that they're very, very inconsistent depending on what you ate, et cetera. What we do is we built that sustained release matrix right into the powder itself, and then you take it as a capsule. Mm -hmm. So we have a much more sustained, sustained release profile. And, and again, it's been a really popular product for us and one that I certainly take and, and recommend to a lot of people. Excellent. Um... Shifting gears from more of the ingredient side to business side of things, 2020 was interesting for a lot of reasons, but particularly for the, the supplement industry um, and various uh, retailers, Amazon, payment processor, Shopify, PayPal, dropped the hammer hard on ingredients that were even just saying, hey, we support immune health. Have you... Uh, being CEO of the company, have you had to navigate any of those challenges working with some of these massive internet retailers and saying, hey, our ingredients are backed by science. We've got the research to prove it. Did y'all have to deal with any of that stuff? Because if Amazon just decides like, hey, like they did with N-acetylcysteine, we don't like this ingredient, that could crush brands you know, for entire years or even force them out of the business. So um, hopefully that doesn't happen with AHEC and there's a, a plethora of research to you know, validate everything that y'all are selling as long and if as long as you don't license the ingredient to have people making reckless claims saying it can cure X Y Z, we should be fine. But I guess speak to some of that if any of those kind of challenges you've had with online processors and, and uh, ingredient suppliers. Um, so we are very conservative. We are very conservative with the claims that we make. Maple actually pleases the marketplace as well. Mm -hmm. um, um, so from that perspective, we 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 are very careful. And again. Any anything in terms of product efficacy is handled by the association. So we just talk about you know cellular health, immune support, etc. Um, um, what we've seen is action from both Amazon and obviously FTC, FDA, really generally pertain to people making very aggressive claims um, and people who basically violate the rules. Um, you know, deserve to be punished because a lot of the ethical brands or the majority of ethical brands 
you know, are careful. It's often like the fly by the night people. At the same right. time, obviously, some of these suspensions of, you know, heart health ingredients across the board or anything that's this, you know, sugar control or sugar support. Uh, I mean, this is just uh, really wild. So, you know, there are those risks that exist. Um, so I've actually been very involved with Amazon. I attend all of their events and uh, participate in every program that they run. And um, so we've tried to sort of maintain that contact in case, you know, Black Swan event happens. Uh, I'm actually in the board of the Organic and Natural Health Association. We're now leading an effort to cool. actually help Amazon uh, create kind of a scalable system mm -hmm. um, to ensure quality. Uh, so that's a very ambitious project, but we've been working pretty closely with them. And, and the goal for us is to eliminate this random swipe across the board. We're going to eliminate this product and it's like no answer why uh, to, a, uh, to a much more systematic and rational process where you can have some independent um, arbiters uh, to be able to sort of look at that and actually confirm, yes, this is valid. Yes, this is not valid. Yeah. So it's always a risk. It's a concern. Uh, we also maintained a pretty active presence on our own website, right? So in an event, Black Swan event, we find, well, people just come to your website. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it, it, tremendous problems, tremendous opportunity for improvement. Uh, nobody's well served when fly by night, you know, companies make wild claims or understate or adulterate. Um, now Foods has done a fantastic job really getting ahead of that issue and educating the industry, uh, but the consumer message you know, hasn't gotten out and it's an issue that I feel very strongly about and have been very involved with on an industry level. Yeah. Um, a lot of consumers are, I would say, hesitant to take the leap into dietary supplements, kind of bouncing off what you just said that there have been not, you know, nefarious players in the past that have adulterated products, oversold the, the claims out to where people get very, very hesitant. My own, my own mom, cardiac rehab nurse, my sister is a pharmacist in, in the New Orleans Hospital Network. And even like th th there's that interesting picture between the medical community and the supplement people. And so how do you bridge that gap to consumers that may be a little weary about using supplements in general as, as a company that supplies ingredients that actually have a, a vast amount of research and high quality research at that. It's not just some random, you know, fly by night journal or whatever that you pay to get published and they just put it out there. It's peer reviewed science. So how do you guys go about um, conveying that message and just reaching out towards the more general base of, for, in, in addition to publishing literature on the websites, what else can we do as an industry to uh, just get the message out there saying there are benefits to these products. How do we go about doing that and just increasing the, the reach of these products to people? The answer to this question really aligns with my personal mission um, and uh, really sort of my goal for, for our brand. So um, we want to build a bridge to the mainstream pharma community. And uh, we believe that going to war with them is not the solution. So, we have sort of a multi-pronged approach. First, we don't like to talk about alternative medicine. In fact, one of the things I say, there's no such thing alternative medicine. There is proven medicine and unproven medicine. And there are plenty of natural compounds that fall into the proven um, because I think we're shortchanging ourselves by basically using the word alternative. The second thing is we, as a brand, uh, take the position that the only way to conclusively prove the efficacy and safety of a compound is to test them in human clinical trials, well-designed, et cetera. That is a pharmaceutical principle. And there's no reason why we can't utilize the same principle in our industry. We don't need to wash down our standards. And third, it's about transparency. So when you go on our website and you look at the, we have a, a, a part of the page where all the ingredients are listed. You can actually click on the ingredient and be taken to a third party site, which summarizes every clinical study, who the subjects were, how many of them there were, what dose they took, et cetera, with a link to the article. So what I tell people is, Look, everybody's trying to sell you something. You don't necessarily need to take you know, everybody's word uh, at face value. Go and do your homework, double check it yourself. We found that, uh, that in terms of um, like medical, mainstream medical community, they often like single compounds, right? They say, okay, I, you've got this clinical study in HCC, I just want HCC. Whereas uh, you know, the herbalist tradition really calls for multiple ingredients. Mm -hmm. So I think the answer for the industry is follow real science, human clinical trials, don't fairy dust stuff, right? If a study was done at 200 milligrams, use 200 milligrams, even if it's more expensive. And if you can't afford to squeeze it in, don't put it into a formula, let people buy it separately. And again, create a level of transparency so that people can see the studies. Um, you know, you were talking about your mom, like we follow the mom and dad rule. So if I'm not comfortable 
giving a supplement product to my parents for whatever reason, it just doesn't make the line. And at the end of the day, when I get the final formula, I look at it and I think of my parents and I say, would I give it to them? And if the answer is no for a single ingredient, the product doesn't proceed. So, but again, we need to have backup and proof and transparency in order to demonstrate that level of integrity. I do think that the industry is moving in that direction, but marketing sometimes trims science. So we're hoping to see more and more of that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned also working with Amazon or how you've attended their events and working on that, how to, we can start validating grease instead of just dropping the hammer and we're getting rid of something just, you know, instead of going after the people that are being reckless, they've got so much money. Maybe they could just start kicking some funds to the researchers to get some more of these ingredients tested to where if they're not sure from their company's ethos, like we're not sure about this ingredient. Well, kick some dollars to some of these researchers and run a couple of small clinical trials and pilots. They've got billions and billions of dollars. Just thought, you know, it's, it's, it's it could be something that would benefit their consumers, the industry at large and everything. I would, that would be an interesting idea. If that could, if well, so I, I love the idea. Um, I'm, you know, with, with Amazon, I'm a little bit skeptical uh, mm -hmm. that they would be able to do that. But frankly, I mean, in my view, they could do that indirectly. If they can just clean up their marketplace, mm -hmm. uh, that would encourage companies to invest in science. I, I mean, yeah. um, ultimately, you know, people respond to incentives. And when you develop a new product and somebody just comes out and, 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 and uh, sells an adulterated version of the product, which you see in things like CoQ10, where people put in 25 milligrams, they say, oh, 400 milligrams. But then they say 400 milligrams containing 5% ubiquinone. Like there's no such thing. Kogi 10 ubiquinone is one to one. So yeah. if they were just to take action to be able to effectively police that, um, then you would have companies doing more and more research. So um, it is a game changing platform. Obviously it plays an enormous role in the industry. And um, I think if they can just clean it up, that would be a great service. Would I love to see them dedicate some funding through some kind of an organization to, to, to fund research? I'd love to. I mean, they do have a couple of supplement line themselves, right? They don't, right. you know, maybe they haven't been as successful, uh, uh, which maybe is beneficial to the industry in some way because we don't want, <laughs> you know, the bad, we don't want to go the way of the battery industry. But exactly. um, yeah, but, uh, you know, Amazon just plays such a part that they can definitely make a big impact. Yeah. Uh, in bringing things to a close here, I've got two other questions that I want to see uh, sure. get your input on. Uh, the first one is going to be a little bit more challenging question. Uh, is that current economic economic environment, there we go, uh, has been challenging for a lot of people uh, on a number of fronts. The dollar is worth less. Jobs are starting to get cut around there. At the sure. same time, material costs are going up. Supply chain issues are still causing either delays in manufacturing, increased in manufacturing costs, delay times, yep. over more, overall more expensive products. From your side, have you seen any drop in sales or in consumers' purchasing habits of that? Maybe they're not going to be going after you know the premium ingredients anymore. They're they're going to be okay with generics. And how do you? What are y'all doing if y'all have seen anything to kind of counteract those issues? Um, a question that a lot of industry folks are thinking about. Um, so there's no question that there is some trade down and substitution where people say, "Well, I can't afford this. I'll just take a simple vitamin C." Um, that is happening in some parts of the market, particularly, I think, uh, among some of the users who entered into the category during COVID. Uh, but a lot of like the loyal, longstanding consumers are still sticking with their guns and continuing to take their products. Some may be dosing down a little bit. They say, well, things are tough. Instead of two capsules, just take a capsule. Obviously, that's not uh, always a wise approach because you're taking a dose and dose is recommended for a reason. Yep. Um, but I think that those are definitely challenges and struggles. And the important thing is to you know, convince consumers about the importance of compliance and continue to take these products. Um, at the end of the day, you pay much more if you are experiencing a health event. We know about medical debt alone, uh, but there's definitely some of that effect. I think we've been fortunate because with the study uh, on HPV coming out, we now gained just a huge, a huge consumer audience of people looking for those solutions. So I think COVID related demand has come down a little bit, but again, we got this pickup in HPV. Um, at the same time, certainly in the immune category, I do think that even though we've come down with the peaks, I think there are people that have realized the importance of human health and entered the category that are now now going back. So I think that is that is a silver lining. So challenging times ahead, uh, but um, we're still you know bullish on, on on the industry, certainly on our business, and in our ability to make a difference in people's lives. 
Uh, and then final question from my end is give us an insight into your daily supplement routine. Sure. So, I mean, we've talked about all these products. So I, I take HCC, I take oligonol, um, I take our probiotic. We have a healthcare professional line. So we have a product called Bifalon that is a probiotic. Um, and, um, I take our microactive curcumin. So those are my, that's my, and a mu multivitamin, um, that I take, uh, the one a day from pure encapsulations, uh, cause that contains the microactive CoQ10 as well. Um, and then, um, during the allergy season, uh, there's allerfin when I'm traveling, I have sleep issues. I take melatonin SR. So I'm very loyal, obviously to the products that, that I take. Um, and you know, as I get older, uh, I may need to get into some other categories like prostate health and such, but so far the stack, uh, before I turn 50, at least has, uh, has taken care of my needs. Outstanding. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today, Dan. Is there anything else you'd like to, to touch on or, or discuss before we, uh, put a bow on the pack and send it? Up uh, so I would say again, ahcc.net. That's the research website. Uh, qualityoflife.net is the finished product brand. So qualityoflife.net. And then if you have any questions, feel free to email me, dan at ql.us. And a shout out to you, Robert. Thank you so much for doing the good work of educating the folks out there. This is really critical to turn this into a better, healthier world. Outstanding. I appreciate the time, Dan. And uh, I look forward to future conversations and the ingredients from Quality of Life. Likewise. Thanks so much, Robert. Take Bye. care.